Hello there, beautiful people, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Miss Danielle. Here on my channel, we talk about all things Jesus Christ. We have Bible studies, prayers, biblical teachings, words of encouragement. If that's something you're interested in, hit the subscribe button and let's get right into the video. So today, my beautiful people, we are going to be doing a video about celibacy. I want to tell you how important celibacy is and I want to remind you that it's very important to God to preserve yourself for your husband or your wife. God is not going to reward anybody that is shacking up, anybody that is having sex outside of marriage, anybody that is just being promiscuous. God is not going to reward this. Actually, you're putting yourself in harm's way. You are you know, bringing danger to your life. And it's so many things that can happen to you if you are having sex outside of the will of God. There's so many diseases that you can catch. There's so many kids you can have that are not meant to be here in a way. You know, God is going to, you know, if a child is born, you know, they're here. God has a will for their life. But, you know, God wants you to have your children with your spouse. And he wants there to be families in the world. In my generation, I'm seeing a lot of broken families, like baby mama, baby daddy. And, you know, some people, they learn their lesson after the first time. You know what I mean? Like they were young, they were dumb, they were living reckless, woo 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 But then there are some people who, like, have created a lifestyle around brokenness. And I just want to encourage you to wait on God because God has a man or a woman just for you, just like he has for everyone. This video is actually going to be about the pros of celibacy, meaning like the biblical advantage of being celibate. The first thing that celibacy can bring and provide for your life is you are going to avoid a lot of sexual demonic strongholds, meaning every time you have sex with someone, you are interchanging with this person and their spirit is coming into you, their trauma, you know, everything about them, their DNA, it's all coming into you and vice versa. You're all going into them. So imagine if you're doing this with a bunch of people and you don't have a husband, you don't have a wife. You are just, you know, sowing yourself into all these different people. You are going to become something and someone that God never intended you to be. And it's so important that you protect yourself because God wants you to be strong. He wants you to be pure. He wants you to be walking in the right mindset. He wants you to have the right spirit about you. All of this stuff is going to destroy your spirit if you are having sex outside of the will of God. So the first thing, you're going to avoid a lot of strongholds. And you don't want to have this because whenever you do finally meet your God-given spouse, you want to be healed. You want to be whole. You want to be ready for that. You don't want to be still thinking about your past, comparing your new actual ordained spouse to some old crazy ex that you had you want to be in the right mind so you can avoid this by being celibate or abstinent number two again you won't you will have no unwanted soul ties with unintended mates meaning again you're not going to be tied to these people because you never did nothing with them a lot of people they are unhappy with being alone i understand that i get that but i'm telling you being alone is so much better than being with the wrong person and wasting your time wasting your youth wasting your life giving your body to so just wait on god because you do not want to have a soul tie with somebody that god did not want you to have it with okay so keep that in mind as well the third biblical advantage of celibacy is going to be god wants men and women to marry this is in 1 Corinthians 7, 2. God wants us to be married. He wants people to have families. He wants you to be operating from a family-like structure. This is so important because you're stronger when you're together. You're stronger when you have a foundation. You know, a lot of women think they don't need a man, but you do. A man is supposed to be there to provide. He's supposed to be there to protect you. He's supposed to be there to lead the family and instill structure into the family, especially if he's living right before God. He's going to do those things. And, you know, men need a woman. They need somebody to nurture and take care and to be detail-oriented about things. You know what I'm saying? All of these things are supposed to work together to create a beautiful foundation for life. You know, the black community is lacking this um, structure that they need. You know, and I know, like, a lot of things that our ancestors went through as far as, like, slavery and racism and this, that, and the third has caused people to you know, have the trauma in our bloodline, like it's in our bloodline, you know what I'm saying? It's still with us, even though they try to act like stuff didn't happen, it's still with us. We can still feel it. Um, but you have to, you know, live your life for God and God's going to show you the way. And if you are living your life for God, he going to give you the 
the order for things in his word. You know what I'm saying? He wants you to get married. And again, a lot of people, they scared to get married. Some people think marriage is just a piece of paper, X, Y, and Z. Um, a lot of people, they dealing with the sin of homosexuality, like because of the stuff that they watching and they following all these trends. So they don't want to be married because of that. Like it's so many things that you can say that you don't want to be married, but you should want to be married because God wants people to be married. He honors marriage. Marriage comes straight from God. It's a covenant with God. He's going to bless marriage. So you want to be married. You don't want to be having sex with everybody because you want to wait till you get married. Number four, God wants you to honor your body. This is in 1 Corinthians 6, 18 through 20. Again, your body is your temple. Everything starts within your body. The thoughts you have, the way you feel, where you're going. Your body is like the, the main vessel of life. You know what I'm saying? So it's important that you respect your body. And I know some people, they didn't grow up with a father if you're a girl. And he didn't teach you what you needed to know as a woman as far as how you carry yourself, how you allow men to treat you, X, Y, and Z. And some men didn't grow up with a father either, a good one or one at all. And, you know, he wasn't there to teach you how to be a man and how to respect a woman. And, you know what I'm saying, how to, you know, cater to a woman, X, Y, and Z. That's okay. But as you become an adult, you have to begin to take the responsibility upon yourself and just teach yourself the things that you didn't get taught through your life. You know what I mean? Because... God wants us to be godly men and he wants us to be godly women if you're a man or if you're a woman. And this is so important because this is going to dictate how your life turns out. You know what I'm saying? Everybody is on a different journey. Everybody's on a different path. Your life is yours. So create a good life for yourself. Don't just be doing what everybody else is doing. Focus on God and allow him to speak to you and he's going to show you the way. Do the right thing. You know what I'm saying? If it's on your heart to get married, get married to a good man or a good woman. And not even just a good man or a good woman. A godly good man and a godly good woman. You feel me? Do those things. Just because everybody else is living this wicked, demonic lifestyle does not mean that you have to fall into that either. Now, the fifth and final biblical advantage of celibacy is sex is powerful and should only be done in marriage. This is in Genesis 2.24. And... This talks about how a man should leave his, you know, father and mother and he's going to cleave unto his wife. Again, sex is powerful. Whenever you do it with the wrong person or anybody in general, it is something where you two are becoming one. It talks about how the man and the woman, once they do that, they become one flesh. And it's meant to be for your spouse and marriage is supposed to be forever. So you're only supposed to be one flesh with one person forever. You know what I mean? So it's so important that you watch out for this world because it's meant to break you it's meant to harm you and they promoting all this crazy stuff and it's just a distraction it's works of the enemy so just know that again sex is meant for marriage it's meant for husband and wife and god wants us to be married forever so when you get married try to stick it out through the end don't even think about that d word and just live a righteous life before god because he had blessings in store for those who actually doing the right thing so yeah these are some of the biblical advantages of celibacy. I pray that this video blessed you. I love you so much. God bless you and I'll see you next time.